In this presentation, we will apply direct labor costs to jobs within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Desktop. Here we are in our QuickBooks Practice File 2. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown and selecting the open windows list. Let's consider what we will be doing by first taking a look at our Excel sheet. We are currently in the third tab, the 1.12 tab. This is going to be our date up top. We're going to be working the amount in green. The To the left-hand side is the problem. So we have the direct labor paid, job 14, 15, and 16. So in essence, we're basically recording the payroll related to the jobs that are being worked on. Now, remember, we're not going to be redoing the payroll within QuickBooks. That could be another course in and of itself. And the payroll could be done within QuickBooks. It could be done by a third party. What we want to do here is think about what the, the transaction would look like to apply this out. So normally, if you think about a payroll transaction, remove the payroll taxes and whatnot, distill it down to its essence, you would be debiting the uh, or increasing us usually the payroll expense, crediting cash. So in this case, however, we're working on a job, which in the last problem, we would have debited rather than payroll expense, the work in process and then expensed all this out or moved it through inventory to finished goods and then cost of goods sold. Here, however, we're just going to move it directly to the cost of goods sold. We're just going to say we're going to skip it down to cost of goods sold, which is going to be basically that timing difference that we will have and record it directly. So that's what we're going to do within the journal entry side. This will be different than the last problem we ran where we put it into work in process and then finished the job and then moved it to cost of goods sold at the completion time. So there will be a timing difference as we track this. So note the difference as we go through. We're going to go through and debit this to the cost of goods sold. Now you could create different cost of goods sold accounts related to cost of goods sold for the uh, for the employees and whatnot if you, if you so choose to do that. I'm going to go up top. We're going to then say that the cash is going to be going down like so and then we're going to record this into the jobs 14 15 and 16 30 68 and 20. so if we go to the jobs over here we're going to be in the direct labor section this is going to be for job 14 it's going to have 30,000, and then for job 15 so we're in job 15 and the in the closed costs and this was 68,000, i believe and then we are in job 16 for the direct labor and i can't remember what this one was that was going to be the 30 the 68 and the 120. so it's scrolling back over we've got 120 here if we add those up 120. if we add those up this i'm holding down control and then selecting this and this that adds up to the 218 that 218 is what we recorded here that changes the totals for the jobs and and so there's the totals for the jobs now how does this tie out into our quickbooks here's all the job totals and here's what is on uh, the trial balance the difference between the two is the beginning balances so the open jobs as of the end of the last time period then ties out to in the cost of goods sold for the current time period that's how we can reconcile this all right, so that we reconcile that out let's have let's do the same thing within quickbooks now so we need to uh, change adjust this so we record the general ledger accounts and then the supporting job cost sheets so we're going to go back to quickbooks we can't use a journal entry what we're going to use instead is a check so that we can use the tools within quickbooks to record it to the job and including the uh, the lists and including the items now it took me to the register when that happens i just double click this space right here if i double click this space it'll open up the actual check so i'm going to say i want to i want to see a check format so there's the actual check that we're going to be writing the information then if we go back over we're going to have will be the check i'm going to write it to i'm just going to make up an employee one and the date is going to be on the 7th the 12th it's going to be on the 12th so bring this up to 112 112 and then I'm just going to call this employee one I'm going to set the employee as a vendor because we're not going to be processing the payroll within QuickBooks it's going to call it employee one the total amount is going to be for the 218,000 so we'll put this at 218 
and then we want to make sure that we're on the items tab as opposed to the expenses tab we're going to put in the direct labor so i'm going to put direct labor and then we'll put the amounts the amount is going to be for job 14 we have the 30 000, the 30,000 so job 14 cost is going to be 30,000 we're going to put this to job number 14 we're going to keep it as billable then we're going to have direct labor again we're going to be breaking this out to the next job and that was for 68,000 so we're going to say the next job is going to be the 68,000. That's for job 15. And then we got direct labor. And the next job for 16 is 120,000. We're going to put this on there for 120,000. That's for job 16. So 30, 68, 120. That should match what we have in Excel over here where we have job 14, 30, 15, 68, and 16, 120. Then we could go ahead and save and close this. So we're going to say save and close, see if it does what we would expect it to do. Closing this back out, let's take a look at our reports. Go into the reports drop down. We're going to go to the accounting and taxes and the trial balance. Within the trial balance, we'll change the dates from 010120 to 123120. And there's what we have. We see that the cost of goods sold is now at 568. If I go back to our Excel sheet, we see the 568 here. That looks right. So we're going to say, okay, there's the 568. If I double click on it and go to the bottom, here's our checks. Here's our three, our one check that's broken out into these three transactions. I click on any one of them, there's our check. Closing this back out, closing this back out. The other side, of course, in cash. If I go to cash up top, double click on that, then we get our check, in, which is one check format, that's because that's what's coming out of cash. If we close this back out, close this back out. The other side then on the job reports, let's take a look at the job reports. And we're going to go down and we're going to say that we have the job time mileage. We want the estimate versus the actual summary report. And there we have it. The total, I'm concentrating now on the cost section, adds up to the 651. So if we take a look at that, we're going to say it adds up to 651,000. And then that is not what's on if I go to the trial balance. That's not what's on the trial balance. And if I want to tie those two out, if I go back to the job report, I say, well, then I just need to think about the beginning jobs that are still in place, which is going to be 12, uh, 31, two, uh, one, nine to 12, 31, one, nine. And then we can consider, oh, there's that 83,000 that are not closed as of the end of the last time period. So if I take the 651 that's in the current open jobs as of now, subtract out the the 83 that was in there as of the beginning of the year and closed out to equity 83,000 that's going to give us the 568 and that's our little reconciliation we'd have to do under this method in order to go back and tie this out to the trial balance which would be at the 568 and that's the same kind of little reconciliation we have here on our on our report so we're just reconciling this out as long as we can do that we know exactly what the difference is and we can make any kind of adjustment we need to if it needs to be on completed contract or percentage of completion or on an accrual met method or whatnot. So then if we go back uh, back to here, we could check out one more report, reports drop down, job time and mileage, and we can go to the job profitability detail report, taking a look this time at job 15. And then we have our breakout. We got the materials and the inventory then the labor and the factory overhead that should tie out to what we have in our excel sheet at the uh, job 15 280 total that gives us the 280 total